Hello there. So I have volunteered to have a bash at converting this EXS file of a sampled drum synth, I believe it is, that Christian Henson has been working on. Uh, it's called the Posh CR76, although somebody said it might be 78. We shall see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So I haven't done this before, um, so it's a learning curve for me, but let's see how we get on. I just need this this folder out of the zip, posh CR76, possibly 78, and it's got these various ES, EXS files. Uh, for some reason, I, I just tested it quickly um, just to get my bearings, and for some reason these individual uh, sources don't work, but the all signals does work, so that's okay. Um, so I'm going to open it up in Decent Sampler, and I'm going to use this new-ish import EXS file um, option. Here we go, so all sigs. Now we get some errors because the paths point to files on uh, Kristen's computer but we just ignore that and probably nothing happens at the moment, no. So we're going to ignore that and just say save preset and we'll call it poshcr76.ds preset. So that's the decent sub for preset. Uh, where have I saved that? I've saved it in there. That's all right. So we'll drag that onto decent sampler. But still, we have some uh, issues with missing files, and that is because we haven't fixed the problem. So if we open it up in, I'm using Sublime Text, other text editors are available, but Sublime Text is truly sublime. So you can see here we have these very long, um, precise paths, um, and that's not going to work. In fact, this we this top one I don't think we even need that. So let's get rid of it. We can leave the preset name there. But here with the samples, we've all we've got these long, um, very long paths, and we need to turn those into I think they're relative paths. Well, that's what they're called. So I'm just going to select that bit, copy it, go on Windows PC. It's Control H presume function H on Mac, something like that. And so I've got it in here. This is that verbose path. And I'm just going to change that first bit j just to swap it out for path equals and the first speech marks replace all. It'll make sense soon, I promise, I hope. So we now have path speech marks posh CR hyphen 76 samples slash and then the sample name. So this should get us somewhere. Let's reopen it in Decent Sampler and see. Okay, for some reason it said errors were encountered, but oh yeah, it seems okay. So I'm, I'm not sure entirely what this should sound like, but hopefully... I presume that's what we're going for? I'm not sure. I'll have to uh, check once I've made a bit more progress. So that's working okay. Now let's have a look at what the uh, structure of this is. So we've got groups, group name CVRR1, so they'll be for round robin one, CVRR2, round robin two, CVRR3, Okay, so there's seven round robins for um, that CV source. Um, then we move on to dry signal. I'm not sure why that starts with round robin what three, but three, five, two, four, six, seven. So I'm not sure what's happened to the. Uh, Round robins for the other round robins for the dry signal. Um, so 
we've got all those. So the first thing, now we, what we want to do, sorry, I should have explained this at the beginning, but uh, probably this will be part of a larger video that will have already prefaced that. But anyway, what I'm going to do is set it up so that you can blend or select the three signal, the source uh, signals, the CV, the dry, and the OS. I'm not sure what OS stands for, but anyway. Uh, so it was suggested, uh, I can't remember who it was now, but somebody suggested, I can picture their face, but can't think their name of the name, sorry, but uh, somebody suggested that tags were used. Now tags, I haven't used them before myself, but I believe these can be used for a range of different things, including voice muting. So if you want to, if you want one group to be muted by another group, for example, um, but we're also going to hopefully be able to assign a, a volume to this particular tag. I'll have to pause the video and work that out um, at some point. In fact, let me just Okay, I just checked a few things. This should in fact be tags. So we're going to tag this CV and then copy this to all the groups that are, are, are named CV. It's all the CV groups, sorry. Uh, I think probably this EXS groups index, we can probably get rid of those. Um, but let's tackle the tags first. Okay. All right, we want to dry, so we're going to change this to dry. You could actually call this um, might actually make more sense just to differentiate it from the name and all these other Oops, probably copy that from there. All right. And we're on to the OAS signal. Oh, perhaps this is the missing dry signal. Here we go. Copy. Cut that, I should say. Uh, where are we? Okay. Dry signal. Round of three. OS. What I'm going to do here is just uh, annotate this a little bit, just to help keep things a little clearer. Oops. OS signal. Commenting that out. Oops. Commenting that out. Control uh, forward slash. OS signal. Commenting that out. 
commenting things out just means that it won't be passed by the, the program. It won't. You'll ignore it basically. Okay. Just spacing these out a little bit. Just makes it easier to see where one group starts and um, yeah, one group finishes and the next starts. Okay, so these here are the CV sig, and for that we're going to. Okay, so oops, there's our groups. Save. Let's just. Uh, it's always a good idea to uh, when you're editing things just check every now and again that you haven't mucked anything up. Remarkably similar, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Who knows? Um, I guess this is the right number of notes. Uh, it looks like a lot more than that, but I guess we've got round robins. Um, okay, so in groups, not group, but groups, we can put in sequence mode. Let me just check that. I've opened up Resonator Glockenspiel V1. Uh, and I'm just checking seq mode, just the syntax of that. Okay, now that's correct. Seq mode, round robin. Uh, this could also be random or true random, or I think there's always, yeah, always as well. I was trying to say also always, but Anyway, always. So let's settle the round robin since that's what is called for here. Uh, the sequence numbers look interesting. I'm not sure quite why. Let's see. It's probably going to be simpler if I change these to the same as the round robin number. One. Seven. So I don't know why these sequence numbers are all the same. Um, maybe the way it was set up in EXS was different. I don't. I'm not familiar with EXS, so I'm just kind of having to convert it to how I would do it in uh, in decent sampler. Of course, I don't really need to be narrating what I'm doing, sorry. It's, uh, it's that fear of dead air. Okay, so I'm not sure why UI keyboard is down here. Probably shouldn't be, so I'll get rid of that. Um, because UI should all have them. Oh, I see. I think UI can probably up here. More usual place for it to be. UI. Uh, so we might need also need this tab group in the UI. Close tab. You've always got to close these little uh, these elements. They're like containers, and you use them a bit like parentheses or brackets. You open, you do what you need to do within that, and then close it so it's contained, and you can nest them in this way. Uh, I realise I'm gesticulating with my hands, and you obviously can't see them. Anyway, uh, so we've got tab main label. We've got labeled knobs. And then somewhere in there would be the keyboard if we wanted to do it. Uh, this here looks like a closing element, but actually it's the same as doing this. 
um, but just because there's nothing in that element at the moment, it's closed within the same uh, pointy brackets, less than, more than, brackety things. Anyway, I shall now pause, go and work out how the tags volume thing works, and prepare the knobs, uh, the labelled knobs for that, and I'll return and explain what I'm doing and what I've done. Okay, I'm back, and uh, I've just added this section here into the tab in the UI. So these are our labelled knobs. These are one for the dry signal, one for the CV signal, one for the OS. Maybe that stands for oversaturated. I don't know. Anyway, uh, so what these do is, this, this here is the sort of visual part of it, but then the binding is what does the real magic. Um, so the type is amp, so that's the amplifier. That's anything to do with sort of volume and the way volume changes over time. So your ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release are also part of the amp, I believe. Anyway, level. See, so normally you do a group or instrument or something like that, but we've now got this new feature, which is tag. So that tells it that we're binding the amplifier this knob controls the amplifier for the tags and then which tag identifier dry signal cv signal and os signal and then what parameter well amp volume all right then um and we also i think have to do this it certainly usually seems to be the case we add in the tag section down the bottom here the tag name volume any other parameters. I think that's basically just a way of making sure that it initiates with those settings. Um, somebody else would uh, could confirm that, possibly. All right, let's see if it works. I know it works because I just checked, but uh, reload, let's see. Okay, so they're still working, but what about volume? Turn them all down. Oh, nothing happens. All right, CV signal. I need to rearrange these actually. So that's the CV signal. All right, then. What about the dry signal? Okay, so it seems to work. Um, we need to pretty things up a bit, but it seems as if that's maybe what's supposed to happen. I'm not noticing any uh, round robin action, but either that's because they're very similar, or I might uh, have mucked up there. I'll have to check that. Anyway, so far, so good. Um, Okay, so I have added in some more labelled knobs. Forgot to uh, record, but it would have been long and tedious anyway. So I've basically just copied over from some other presets that I've made, other instruments, I should say. Attack, release, and tone, and I'm also adding reverb, just because that could be fun. And this is what it looks like. So uh, I need to set those so that probably those are at zero when you first open it. It's dry. We've got the round robins working, by the way. I'm not sure if that's meant to be the right meant to be in there. Anyway, let's uh, now create a, a background for it. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop. This is a background. I'm working for another instrument. Um, just a silly thing between projects. Okay, so 
let's get rid of that and get rid of our knobs for the moment. Okay, so this here is how I deal with sizing in uh, decent sampler backgrounds. So I'm going to take this. Oops. I'm going to take a screen capture, print screen, kind of like this. Paste, place it here. And I want to just line it up as best I can. I think, there we go, basically we just want all of that outline to go. And now, because uh, Decent Sampler actually um, does the, the placement of the knobs, or the controls, sorry, is in relation to this point here, not up here. The background stretches all the way up to here, but the placement is within this section. So what I do is I move this up like that, and save that, and I go like this, and Okay, so some of these knobs are in the right place already. Um, we don't need the lower row probably. I might end up moving some things, but um, let's see. Let us, for a start, let's bring in the image that Christian supplied. Oops, copy that. and see how this is going to fit. Okay, so we've got a few options. I'll just turn this into a smart object so I can scale it without losing quality. We could go like this. Have it kind of sitting down like that one option or we can yeah I think it's going to be difficult to try and use any of the controls on here because they'll be frustrating for the user because it looks as if you could use a whole load of these uh, and you can't so what we might do uh, if I had more time I would perhaps replicate the style of this, uh, which we still could. I think it's a good idea to have this down here, but uh, we might get rid of, if possible, some of these uh, extraneous plant life. Um, how do we want to do this? Like this. This is probably will look terrible because of it being stretched. It's not the prettiest, but for a moment, let's go with it. So my idea here is to merge those layers, duplicate that. Merge it, filter, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to do a kind of uh, pseudo tilt shift style. Just have to excuse me uh, mucking around with this for a moment.
Once again, probably a lot of this won't even get used, but uh, you never know. All right, I think that sort of looks okay. Uh, I'm not so keen on this area here, so I might just Okay, so it's not perfect, but I think it will, it will do. Okay. Noise, reduce noise. Okay, so um, what I might do is actually put a black background up here anyway, which means I probably don't need to worry too much anyway. Okay, I'm going to I can try this in a couple of different ways, but let's try brightness, contrast. about all this UI design business is that it does take quite a bit of time um, and it can be a little bit um, well there's, there's so many options so much choice so you sometimes have to just be a bit firm with yourself and make some decisive decisions Okay, so alone that isn't quite doing the trick. So I'm going to add one of these. Let's group these adjustments. Okay, so we're going to go like this. Okay, so I am quite happy with that. I think that perhaps. I need to adjust the rest of this so that it's not quite so bright. All right, so save that. I'm going to save that as a PNG in samples and we're going to call it background. Save. All right, so uh, I need to go, sorry, let's go here. I'm just looking at another of my, one of my uh, instruments, background, I am out. Don't need to worry about cover art particularly. So that just goes in the UI section. And this needs to be the same as, as this path here. Okay. Let's have oops, let's have a look and see if that works. Okay, so of course I forgot that that would be dropped down there. That's okay, we shall. How will we do this? Well, for a start we can bring up my guides, which I should have looked at to begin with. So this whole not here, we'll group that, that's the background. I'm going to go like this. And we're going to basically take this area here.
basically this will be hidden. I'll just uh, All right, so let's re-export that. Again, it's all just about trial and error. Background, export. Uh, okay, so that looks okay. We're just going to have to put some put things in better places and change the colors a little bit. Uh, so let's go back to Photoshop. In fact, print screen. Go back to here, go back to our, go to our guide layer, copy and paste that, pa paste, sorry, uh, our that, our, uh, our screen caption. And we're going to work on the placement of these. Now, we have to work out the sizing of our, our labeled knobs. So they are 90. So that's the size of them. I tend to do something like this. It's a whole new color. Okay, go like this. You always have to uh, click on this reference point top left because that's the reference point we're using in Decent Sampler. Uh, here we're going to go like this, go 90px, 90 pixels. Uh, I think the height might be a little bit wrong, but yeah, it's roughly something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to work out where we want these just like... I'm just going to uh, do this so that I can see my... See my um, my knobs. Okay, where is this? X Y uh, sorry X five Y twenty. Okay, so I'm going Control T, which is the same as going Edit Transform Scale or whatever. Again, that upper left hand corner. X is five y is 20. So that's that position. So we could keep those there. We could change the color to white um, and then have attack and release here maybe and then uh, tone and reverb down here. Or we could go how would this fit? Attack release. Yeah, I think it's going to be better if it's attack release and then tone and reverb like that. Or in fact, could be down here. Attack, release. Um, something like that, and then tone and reverb over here. Um, let's, uh, let's try that. Okay, so if this one here is five and this is 105. Uh, how are we gonna do that? All right, so this one here is 55 and 129. And what are those? Well, that's going to be attack and release. Okay, so 55, 129. 129. And this one here is 155 and 129. 
129. Let's see if that ends well. Right. So those look a bit low to me, so I think we're going to bring them uh, up a bit. Let's see, 120. That might work. Um, let us control. Uh, okay, what is the color code for white? FFF? No. Yeah, FFFF. Something like that. Okay. Go here and track color. Gene. Oh, actually. The FF part at the beginning of that is the. Um, is the uh, alpha, al alpha, <laughs> sorry, the alpha code, so that's the transparency of the, um, of the color. And then you've got the actual color code itself after that. It's thoroughly confusing, but um, there you go. You'll have to excuse me rambling a bit, I'm uh, getting a bit tired. It is 11.52 p.m. here in the Antipodes in New Zealand. Okay, I think that's everything. Oops, let's see. So, that looks pretty good. Um, I think tone and reverb could be somewhere different. In fact, I think tone probably wants to be... Oh no, let's leave those there, but let's centralize them. So we're going to gonna put them put them here, I think. Five five five. That one and six five five for this one. Okay, I think that's right. Okay, that looks okay. Um, I'm not sure why the keyboard is pushed way off to the side like that, uh, but it is. <laughs> If I turn the release down, that will be a bit. Should let's leave that at one say. So where are we in here? Value. We're gonna make release us. Oh, oops, that's reverb. There's release value. We're gonna set that to one. Okay, I think we are. Pretty much done. That looks fairly nice. Um, we need to change the name to CR78 because I'm pretty sure that's what that says on there. Yeah, so we're we're pretty much done. I'm going to zip this up and uh, upload it. Oh, I'm just going to change these uh, these initial values. So CV, signal, max value, value is going to be zero, and so is OS. Just check that that worked. Okay, so there we go, uh, done. Oh, one last thing. Uh, we could add some uh, some knobs. So I've got these. They're called gold knobs because they were originally gold when I photographed them. And press screen once again. Okay, move these two up a row. Move them to the right place. Oh, 
that's interesting. Are my two knobs interesting? Didn't even pick up on that. Um, so let's change this to 78 because I'm pretty sure that's what that's meant to be. Uh, y should be 20. Uh, maybe it's the size that's wrong. The size is 90, 90, 90. Our text size, here we go. 20. Almost didn't pick up on that. All gets up very complicated. Okay, so that should be correct now. Let's get rid of all those old guide layers. Print screen. Okay, once more with feeling. These ones look like they're in the right place. We don't need this one here, this one here, and this one here. We're going to move across like this. Row row needs to be moved down like so. So that looks right. Uh, so there we go. So it will look something like this. I don't know whether we want the knobs or not, but let's... Um... Okay, it looks quite good, I think. Um, whether we really want those knobs, I don't know. They are vaguely in keeping with the style, but um, who knows. Let's upload it, see what everybody thinks. Again, I don't know why this is all there, but it is. It's done. Thanks again. Ta-ta.